Here we go, bright and early today, uh, Advent of Code 2021, Day 3. If you don't know what's going on here, check the description. We're not wasting any time. Let's go. Binary Diagnostic. The submarine has been making some odd creaking noises. So you ask it to produce a diagnostic report just in case. Yeah, that would suck at the submarine filled with water, right? The diagnostic report, which is your puzzle input, consists of a list of binary numbers, which, when decoded properly, can tell you many useful things about the conditions of the submarine. The first parameter to check is the power consumption. You need to use the binary numbers in the diagnostic report to generate two new binary numbers called the gamma rate and the epsilon rate. The power consumption can then be found when multiply the gamma rate times the epsilon rate. Okay. So somehow there's two numbers in one, or we'll figure, I guess we gotta keep reading. Each bit in the gamma rate can be determined by finding the most common bit in the corresponding position of all numbers in the report. What? <laughs> um, considering only the first bit of each number, there are five zero bits and seven one bits. Oh, what the zero, one, two, three, four. So look at the first you're looking at the column, right? So basically here we're instead you're not looking at the the, the 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 number horizontally, you're looking vertically. So we can see that in column uh the first bit, well, is this big or little Indian? Um uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so when they say first bit, they mean the left one because they say uh, seven one bits. Since the most common bit is one, right? Because out of this many rows, there is one, two, three, how many rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, three, four, five. Well, yeah, seven, seven plus uh, five is 12, yep. So there's seven ones, therefore one is the most common. So the first bit of the gamma rate is one. I see. Uh, the most common second bit is zero. So the second bit of the gamma rate is zero. The most common value of third, fourth, and fifth is one, one, zero. So the gamma rate is one. So basically you have to look at all the numbers together and say, all right, well, what's the most common for the first is a one or a zero, the most common for the second, third, fourth, and then you get a single five bit uh, binary number, and that's your gamma rate. Okay, so then we're gonna take that gamma rate, convert it to decimal, multiply it. The epsilon rate uh, is pretty much the opposite, so you just flip, you invert all the bits, right? So one, zero, one, one, zero, multiply it by its inverse, and you're good to go. You don't actually need to cap figure out the epsilon rate uh, separately. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or nine in decimal. Multiplying the gamma rate times the epsilon rate is 198. Use the binary numbers in your report to calculate the gamma and epsilon rate multiplied again. What is the power consumption of the submarine? Yep. So we got to convert to decimal. Okay. So. Um, one way to do this, I think the, it, the, the there are pro I think there's some clever ways to do this, right? You could do some, some shifts or some bit masks or, you know, some power of, cause it's binary, some power of two math maybe. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just the really straightforward way of that. We know it's five bits, right? Let's check our input. Oh, it's not five bits. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's twelve bits. Okay, but regardless, we got twelve bits. So let's just have thirteen counters, right? Just in memory, have hold thirteen um, integers, right? And for each one of these, right? If we see a one, right? So we have we have 13 integers one for each column and so this only every time we see a one we're going to we're going to um increment the you know the integer that go, basically goes with that column so actually we could load everything 
you could actually um maybe that is a better idea is just load like you would load everything into S SQL light and do a sum right it basically just needs to sum the column you sum uh, the sum of the column is going to be the number of ones and then the count of the rows is going to be the number of rows and anything if the if the sum is greater than half the number of rows then then that's going to be a one on the gamma and a zero on the epsilon. So you really just need to sum the columns as if it was a spreadsheet uh, and also get the length, the count of the entire thing. I, do I actually want to use SQL Lite to do that? I think if we just, um, you know, like, you know, transform this. Right. Instead, you know, to make like, you know, this to make each column into a row and each row into a column. And then you could sum that way. Right. Uh, so we could basically make uh, a Python list. Right. We can make a list for each. Right. We can make a list for the first column, a list for the second column, a list for the third column. And then, you know, just iterate. Right, and then basically append to each list. It's really the same thing that I just said with the integer thing, um, but I guess having the lists rather than just going straight to the sums directly uh, is a little bit more flexible in case part two tries some shenanigans, which I think is gonna happen. Yeah, so I'll make a list per column. I'll just append the digits to each list will so we'll make you know how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so we'll make 12 lists but we're going to make we're going to write the code such that you know it would work even if the input had fewer or more lit or more um longer numbers it just we're going to we're going to stick with the assumption that all the binary numbers are the same number of digits but uh, we're not going to make assumptions about the length we'll detect the length and create the correct number of lists um, and then, yeah, then once we have a list of, of integers that are zeros and ones, we can just sum the Python function, sum parentheses, the list, and then we'll, we'll also have the length, the length of all the lists will be identical. So we'll know the length as well. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, cool. Pew. So, we'll, uh, new folder day three. Copy, paste. Oh, so what was this called again? Binary diagnostic. Binary diagnostic one. And then we need to get our input. Of course, it comes and bothers me with something like that, right? It's like, what? Oh, it's because I'm not logged in. That's why. I'll have to do it this way. Okay. There we go. We got it. Fantastic. So the parsing of the input, I think we just, um, we want to split it into a bunch of ints, right? Zero or ones or, you know, right? Uh, we don't even have to do that. Um, Hmm. Just for each line, first input append line. Um, we can actually um 
We don't just want to put the strings in there. Let's bust them up into lists. So how can we, let's try it. So let's say we have a string, a zero, one, 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 one. Okay. Uh, so we just split, no. Split it on, no, we want to split on literally every character. Uh, well, I guess it's already split on every character. There, like you just do list string and then you have it split on every character. But we want to do, um, int x for x in string. There we go. That's how we do it. In X for X in line. Uh, there. Go away. I'll fix that later. All right. So yeah, so this is going to put, may give us a, the parsed input will be a list of lists that look like this. Right? Um, and then... We will, so let's do, uh, what should we call this? Get gamma epsilon or something? Get gamma epsilon, calculate gamma epsilon. Diagnostic data comes in, okay. So then what we're gonna do is, uh, for each, hmm. uh -huh. <clears throat> hmm. uh, I'm just trying to think here a little bit. I want to make this more elegant. Let's do uh let's do gamma counts. Oh no, the the one counts. One counts equals, right? So we'll say four number in data four digit in the number if digit is one for digit in enumerate there we go if digit is one then one counts index uh We can actually make this a dictionary. Let me just try something. Yeah, see, list index out of range. So we're going to have to set it equal to zero first. Oh. No, we're going to have to... Yeah, it's just sort of like we'd have to fill up that initial list of all zeros, because um, the you know because the the link the if we use a a dictionary, then we don't need to like pre-populate the the list. We can use the set default function, which I have to look up every time I use it. Python set default. Set default. Key name value set default returns the value of the item for this. Okay, key does not exist. Insert the key with the value. Right. So if it's if it does exist in there, set it to something. Otherwise, don't. Uh, 
I don't know if we need that. All right, this is fine. This is no other way to rotate in some. Maybe there's a way to do it. Uh, Python rotate list of lists so that the rows. All right. Oh, they want to rotate it 90 degrees. Is that the same thing? So if you rotated this 90 degrees, yeah, this. Zip reversed. Would zip reversed work as a rotation? You're rotating 90 degrees, then that means this column, this, yeah, this row becomes a column. Why would this, so reversed grid? Zip star reversed. All right, let's figure out why that works. Um, so we have a let's make a let's we had to make a list first. Zero one zero. We had to make a list of lists. Uh, one zero zero, and then zero. Oh, let's do one one one. Okay, so you have our list. What's star reversed L? No. So reversed L? Okay, so here's L. And if it gets reversed, then this one comes there. This stays in the middle. And that goes there. Okay. So... So zip reversed L Okay. So yeah, so zip is just zipping it with nothing. But if we do this, so the star is basically going to instead of passing just one list, right? So see we passed to, to zip without the star. What's happening is this whole list, this outside list, is getting passed to zip as its only parameter, and thus it's zipping, right? These, these, the actual numbers, the insides, are being treated as sort of, you know, a whole unit, right? Once we do star, that would be star reversed L. That's the same thing now. Instead of doing, you know, this one big list, it's the same thing as going, ah, so zip, you know, this one and this one and this one. It breaks out each component of the big list as another parameter. So zip will be getting past three different parameters. Star reversed L. Right? And in this case, let's take a look. L versus star reversed L. So um, let's see. So in the first column... We have zero, one, one in the original. Let's do it back. Let's do it like this, so it's easier to see. That's the thing, and that's the rever That's the rotated. So in column one, we have zero, one, 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 zero. Well, that's yep. And in column two, we got one, zero, one, one, zero, one. And in column three, we got zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. So they're they're flipped to the left because it was a the direction of the rotation. 
but I think that is actually going to work. And then you can sum each of these. So we actually don't need any of this iteration at all because we it's just a rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, uh, we're going to say rotated data equals zip star reverse the data. So now it's been rotated, but now we need to get the sums of each, right? So the sum here would be one, one, three, well, down here would be two, two, and uh, two, two, one. So you want the, oh, we got to get the length of the data first. Um, num numbers equals the length of the data. Yeah, rotate, because the rotation would make it to, uh, <laughs> well, I guess we could always get the length of just one, one row after we rotated it, and that would be the length, but it's easier to get it first, right? So it's the number of numbers, uh, rotated data. So we rotated it. Uh, now we'll say uh, epsilon. Oh no, was it, which one was which? Which one was which? Oh, we don't need that anymore. Uh, the most Gamma. Yeah, so epsilon is the least common bit. So if ones are greater than is are greater than fifty percent, then gamma gets a one, uh, and epsilon uh, gets a zero. And if zeros are the uh, the most common bit, then uh, gamma gets whatever is the most common, whichever. Right, so the if the sum divided if the sum over the num of numbers is greater than a half, then gamma gets a one, epsilon gets a zero. Otherwise, reverse. If the sum is low, then gamma gets a zero. Cool. So epsilon starts out as that, and so then for a digit in the rotated data. If the sum of the, well, we'll call it a column. The sum of the column divided by the num of the numbers is greater than 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then epsilon, da, oh, epsilon da append a zero, else, Epsilon to append one. All right, seems good. Episode, not episode, Epsilon, great. Uh, and now we need to do a um, binary conversion here. Uh, so let's see in Python if we have one, 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 like this. Well, actually, we're going to have a list of going to join them. No. No, we can't do that. String X. Uh, list of digits into integer. Let's Google. Python list of digits into integer. How to convert list of integers into a single integer in Python. Here we go. Uh, they're doing a map 
Oh, they did. They're doing map instead of um. Uh, yeah, they got the join, but they're doing map on string instead of the list comprehension that I was doing. So it's join map string list. Okay. Let's just try that. No. Oh, it's because I accidentally overwrote the string. It was I was correct. I just accidentally overwrote the string function or the variable. There we go. Uh, the list comprehension would have worked actually. It, yeah, I was right actually. I just overwrote string, the string function with a with a with a not with a value, and messed it all up. Okay, so, uh, and now we need to we gotta look up in order to to flip all the bits. I think it's just an or, if an, a binary or. Uh, so we'll look that up. See, Python convert into binary. Is a way to oh use bin, okay, oh but bin convert a string to binary, how to convert a string to binary, uh, ord b for x in string oh. For x in binary string. Mm. Well, yeah, I guess it's ord. Oops, get out of here, ads. Okay. I've never, I've never used ord before. What does ord do? Let's look that one up. Python ord. Is it just ordinance? Ord function. Turns an integer representing the Unicode character. Oh. The syntax of ORD is ORD character. Ah, okay. So ORD of 5 is Unicode 53. Hmm. All right. So what's what's ORD of uh, 0? 48. And ORD of 1 is 49. Uh, what were these examples with the... This one, no. Python uh, convert string to binary. Oh, the int function can take a parameter, which is the um, the base. That's what we can do. Right? We could do an int. The string is base two. And then bit. This is this is much better. I was like, or that's <laughs> looking at the Unicode characters. That's even strange. This is what we want. Int can be past the base, and then you can call bin to convert the int. So let's try it. Let's say we got uh, fifty, right? So the int. Oh, well, we got one one. Let's do one one zero. So that's going to come out as one hundred and ten. But if it's base two, int can't convert non. Oh, okay. So there we go. So one one zero is a six. Four plus two plus one is six. Oh, four plus two plus zero is six. So this will be seven. Yeah, and then we can do bin, and there you go. You got binary. But we don't need the binary. We just need the the base two part. So we're good there. All right. So number of numbers, rotate it, or each column in the rotated data if the sum is Divided numbers is greater than a half, then append a a one, right? Because that means if the sum is greater, greater than, then that's a big number. There's a lot of ones, which means that we're one is the majority. So we're going to append a one, and right, and then so on, and then, uh, 
So the epsilon is going to now be, the epsilon at this point will look like this. Right, so we need to convert that into a six. So if I join, no. All right, string x for x in. We join that, and then we do an int comma two on it, and there we got our six. Cool. So the eps uh, the epsilon list. Uh, so the epsilon equals exactly what we had down there. Int join. String x for x in x epsilon list. Two. And then we need to do a binary or to flip all the bits. I think Python binary flip all bits. I think it's or. So that's in a string. We don't want to do that. We want to just do an or, right? Binary or Python binary operations. Bitwise operators. Uh, flip all the bits. These ones, shift, shift, and is it just a stick for or? Or tilde for inversion? Yeah, the inversion, tilde. So let's just test that out. One one zero binary. Oh no, is it isn't it? Is it B one one? No. We can do that. Oh, it's oh it's zero B. Zero B one one zero. There we go. So then we could do so the tilde, right, would flip the two ones to be it would be be a one. Oh no, a negative seven? Why did it in negative seven? One, one, one. So the tilde just made the zeros become ones, but didn't make the ones become zeros. Complement the number you get by switching each one for a zero and each zero for a one. The same as tilde space. Is that not working? It's not flipping the the first two ones. Why is that? The complement of x. Oh, it's like two's complement thing, right? because of two's complement or whatever. Because the actual way the bits of the integer are stored in RAM is not the... Yeah.
Yeah, it's negative uh, x plus, yeah. So that's not what we want. A unary invert. Yep, two's complement. We knew that. Yep, okay. So how do we get the actual... In case you would like an unsigned integer returned for you, four bit number, you have to mask. Unsigned. Oh, so we could do unsigned. If we do unsigned, uh, that'll work. Oh, NumPy does it, but I don't really want to do that. Unsigned 32-bit or import C types. Oh, F, 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 F. Yeah, you could do a bit mask of just everything. Uh, um. Hmm. Might just have to do this a less, you know, less fancy way. All right. All right, let's give up on, on trying to do that. Let's just do the flipping. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, epsilon int join the string or epsilon. So that's going to give us our epsilon. Great. Uh, but we want to get our gamma list first. Hmm. So the easiest way to, to you know switch between zero and one would be well, I guess we can't do not right um, can't just do not yeah it's not gonna work so I think it's if we do and one. No, that's not going to work. The tilde thing's not going to work either. Yeah, that'll become a negative one. That'll become a negative two. Okay. Uh, just so this, the epsilon list actually just has a one. So we want to turn a one into a zero. It's going to be like, or I have to look at like a binary logic thing is it xor uh, you want nand yep we could do nand because we could do nand 1 not and one, right? So if we say zero, if a zero comes in and we do not and one, we'll get a one. And if a one comes in and we do not and one, we'll get a zero. So one, not and one. No, it doesn't work. Can we do not one and one? And not zero and one. There we go. Yeah. So it the the one is the one on the right is hard coded. The one on the left is the input. Um, right. Yep. So we just need to convert the booleans back to integers. Uh, uh, I think we could just do an if at this point, right? 
let's do a, a flip function. Okay, and then we'll just do flip x for x in. Oh, no, wait, this is, oh yeah, this is after the summing happens, cool. So epsilon is that number, gamma is the same thing like that. Return both numbers. Okay, finally. Is that is it the multiplication what they asked for? Uh, oh, it's the power consumption. Power consumption. Yeah, you know, multiply them together to get power consumption. Oof, okay, let's see what we got. We got a problem. Reverse is not defined. Why is reverse not defined? Python list reverse. Oh, we've got to do list dot reverse. Okay. It's an in place reversion. Okay. Sure. No such file or oh, it's because I'm in the. Okay, epsilon list. I must have typed something wrong. No, oh, here it is. Epsilon. That's what I messed up. Two nine seven two three three six. I want to make sure. That this is correct here. There's a thousand numbers that make sense. Epsilon and the gamma. That looks right, actually. All right, let's uh, let's go with it. Two nine seven two three three six. That's the right answer. That is the right answer. Fantastic. All right.
let's go to part two. Hopefully it's quick. Uh, before I go to part two, I'm going to save and I'm going to make part two here. Okay, cool. All right, you should verify the life support rating, which can be determined by multiplying oxygen generating by CO2 scrubber rating. The oxygen generator rating, the CO2 scrubber rating are values that can be found in the report. Finding them is the tricky part. Both areas located in a similar process. Filtering out values until only one remains. Before searching for either rating value, start with the full list of binary numbers from your diagnostic report. And consider just the first bit of those numbers. Okay. Keep only numbers selected by the bit criteria for the type of rating value for which you are searching. Discard numbers which do not match the bit criteria. If you only have one number left, stop. This is the rating value for which you are searching. Otherwise, Repeat the process, considering the next bit to the right. Okay, so this is a um, like a binary search tree situation, but I don't think I'm gonna <laughs> write a binary tree, even though that's probably the correct thing to do. Um, the bit criteria depends on which type of rating value you want to find. To find the oxygen generator, determine the most common value, and keep only numbers with the bit in that position. Aha. Uh -huh. If 0 and 1 are equally common, keep values with a 1. Okay, so 0.5, we're going to keep a keep a 1. 1 wins on a 0.5. Okay. To find CO2 scrubber rating, determine the least column value in the current position. Keep only numbers with that bit in that position. Oh, so we're, we're cutting the list down, though. Okay. If 0 and 1 are equally common. Keep values with the zero in the position being considered, right? Okay, so you look at all the numbers and you say, okay, what's the most common digit, right, for this first column? Is it one or zero? If it's one, you have to delete from the list everything that starts with one. Uh, sadly, I don't think our implement current implementation will help too much with part two. Usually that's my goal is to make part two easy by making a good part one. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do that here. So it's oxygen scrubber. Hopefully we can do both at once though. Okay, so we can do the same I guess the same column thing here, right? But the problem is we have to redo it. We have to redo it for um, after each filtering. So this will only be valid for column one if we just try to reuse this data because we're we're gonna chop the the input. So um, Uh All right. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a it's a clever there definitely is a clever way. But I always write things in a straightforward way. That's just how I do. The straightforward way, which is usually the slow, not fancy algorithm way. All right. I did think of the rotation for the first part, and the rotation will still work, but we're going to have to rotate each time after filtering. So we can't just do this one single rotation. We could break this rotation out into a separate function here. We'll do that. Um, Yeah. 
And then, yeah, so even if we had, had, you know, this simple bit flip is not going to work for, you know, because here it's like, oh, we got epsilon. Gamma is basically free in part one. You know, you get the epsilon and gamma is free. That's not the case for part two. In part two, you have to do the whole process twice, once with the, right, with, with, because you're filtering differently. You're not, get the, you don't have the same results all the way down. Um, so ro we, the rotate and sum can be reused. So All right. So let's just make sure we get the same result. Something's wrong. What did I mess up? Oh. What did I mess up now? Num num. Oh, we need the num numbers here? Oh, we do. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our rotate and sum broken out. We can reuse it here. So now what we're going to do is we have the initial data, right? We only want the first column of the rotate and sum, though. Uh, I guess it won't hurt to do all the columns, but... Yeah, we're going to be unnecessary with this implementation calling th this. We're going to be unnecessarily summing the further columns that we're not using. Um, we can put it. We can put like an escape flag to try to make it faster. But I don't think I don't think it's going to be a performance. If it's a performance hit problem, we'll do it. But otherwise, we're going to be unnecessarily summing the rest of the remaining columns when we only need one column. Okay, so. What we'll do here is, uh, oh, you got to start with column one, right? So oxygen generator rating is keep the ones with the most common bit. So let's just do, let's just do calculate oxygen on its own here. And then we'll be able to figure out how to do the other, the scrubber next. So, uh, we're going to rotate. Going to rotate and sum the data. And we care about the first column. Okay. Uh, and then we would say, you know, so we're going to say, like, if that is greater than or equal to 0.5, and this, because they said if it's 0.5, give it to, right? If they're equally common, keep values with a one. Oh, it's not to keep the most, it's keep something with a one. So one should be the winner. Or zero is the winner here. The least common value. Okay, so a ones should win on a 0.5. Well, let's see. If it's just greater, if the sum is greater, then ones win. So ones, just now st ones still win. Great. Um,
We're going to copy it, make a copy here because we're going to be filtering it. I don't know if we actually need to do that because this already is a, a copy. Um, Actually, what we can do we can do this. This isn't the greatest either. <laughs> um, let's just try let's just try doing this to start just to make sure it works. All right, so if you've got something in the first column, right? There you go. For each index, right? Okay. So we're always looking at the first column because that's what we're. Oh, no. We're going to look at, well, we're going to keep going through, but we're not going to throw away the earlier, earlier ones uh, just yet. If rotate and sum the data in that column is greater than five, then uh, we're going to filter the list to keep only the ones where i is uh, data. Rotate and sum that column. We're going to go 0.5. Then oh, delete anything where that column is not 1. So data is equal to. x for x in data if data i is 1. It's 0. Yep. Both uh, well, yeah, I'm checking both columns. Before searching for either, start with the full list of binary numbers. Keep only numbers selected by the bit criteria. If you only have one number left, stop. This is the rating value for which you are searching. Otherwise, repeat. Okay. So you need to put a if the length of the data is one. Number is 12. Consider the second bit, yeah. Third position where it gets down to one each in that position. Generating is that number. So whatever that number is, that's the oxygen rating. Cool. Uh, All right, let's see what we got. Sutton's not happy. List index out of range. What? Okay. So here's our here's our thousand. Yeah, thousand values. Okay. Cool. List index out of range. The length of the data. Uh, 
Um, okay, so index is zero. What's data zero? The first one is this number. Cool. And then Ah, I see why. I think that's the problem. Eleven. Uh, where did we stop here? Oh, is the data the data has been filtered down to a single a single value? Did it work? I think it did work. That's the value there. Okay. Let's take this to uh, a function here. Binary string to int. Okay, so now we can reuse that. Uh, is that all we want? Yeah, it's all we want. We just want to filter down to the single number. So now, which is scrubber, is the other one? Scrubber? Oh, we're, part two is down here. Scrubber rating.
in string to int uh, so we're going to flip some things here we're going to do that and that do that oh no we're going to keep the equals right yeah Is that the only difference? Is this zero, one, and less than, greater than flippage? I think so. Okay. Uh, life support rating is what it's called. Is it 756900? I won't be surprised if this is wrong. I'm going to type it in anyway. That's Yeah, I didn't think that would be right. <laughs> didn't think that would be right. Okay, something's definitely wrong here. Hmm, let's see. What's wrong? So, we have the original data. I just want to check this, see if this changes the result. It did, uh, something's wrong. Oh. Python copy, copy. Copy dot copy, yeah. That didn't actually change the result, so that wasn't our problem. Okay, so. The data is starts out here. And it's the list of un it's just our input that's parsed out. One 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 one. Oh, it's not just our input that's parsed out. Oh, it it's oh oh. It is the input parsed out, but the bottom one, this is actually the first item. Okay. That's it doesn't matter. The order of the things in data. Okay. So now so the data is the input to the problem. For each one Oh, uh, we want to no, we want to rotate in some data. Oh no, so we rotate and sum the whole data. And then we just look at the first column, column zero. Uh, and that's, oh, the point 0.5 is happening here. It's not just rotate and sum, it's actually doing the point 0.5. It's doing the num numbers here. That's that's an issue. Um, uh, 
uh, all right, because it's doing the whole, it's doing the whole thing. It's not just doing the rotate and sum. It's actually doing the. All right, so I guess the rotate and sum function isn't very reusable. Is the is the problem? Okay. Um. Well, it's rotate. No, hold on. It's doing for all the columns. Does that equals uh, fix anything? No. Oh, that the equals actually fixed some stuff there. Was the equals the issue? Two nine seven two three three six eight six six seven six one. Nope, that's not right either. Okay. <laughs> um. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. Okay. So, for the number of, for, we're going to go through all the columns of the data. So the range is the length of the data. Oh, but that's not right. The range is not the length of the data. The range is the length of the, like the first, you know, the size of one of the, of any one of the items. Okay. So then we rotate and sum. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, Okay, so yeah, so here we're doing this like greater than 0.5 thing, but that's that's not right. We just need to say, you know, is it zero or one? It's or this has already been done for us, right? Oh, so actually, hmm. All right, so of the data that's left. Right, Col in column zero, zero is winning. Therefore, right, zero. All right, uh, we can actually do do this. So we're going to go through the data, and for each, right, if, so I, Is this going to work? So if zero's the winner, right? Right, so it's going to give you a list of winners for their columns of the of the data items uh that are still not filtered out. 
And then you're going to say, okay, well, if the, you know, whoever has, whoever's matching the winner stays in the list. And now the only difference between this one and calculate scrubber. Is this not equals? I think. I think this might have trouble on the uh, this part. Because you're saying here, you're saying keep the winners. So filter where the value is equal to winning value. And here, filter where the value doesn't equal the winning value. The tie rule, though, I think is going to throw it off. Because we're, put, we're doing this up here universally. Or is it needs to be different between these two? Let's see what happens. Oh. Oh, this seems much more correct. Three, three, six, eight, three, five, eight. Three, three, six, eight, three, five, eight. That's the right answer. That took too long, but we got there. Okay. Whew. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow.